Hey, time for some Type 40. <laughs> Extra Type 40 here exclusively for you right now with me, Dan Hadley, Birmingham's King of the Geeks. Welcome back. Welcome back to the channel. Type 40 Extra. Here we are. It's uh, what is Type 40 Extra? I hear you. I hear you cry. Well, it's about before show, after show and in between show to the, the podcasts and the live streams and everything else that we do here under the Type 40 banner. All the fun and games, all the ranting and raving and all the banter with, with all the panellists and you guys there too in the in the live chat and comment sections. Thank you as always for, for all of that. We've got a lot to get stuck into this time. This was a video that I sincerely didn't want to make, I have to say. I've come close a couple of times, but I've, I've held off. I've placed faith, bit my lip, whatever you want to call it, but it, it's time to blow off some steam. And I'm afraid, as much as I hate to admit it, it's at Shooty Gatwa, our incoming doctor. Whoa, 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 where do you think you're going, mate? <laughs> no, no, no. Take it slow. We've got to have a word. This isn't the kind of video that I enjoy making, particularly in the anniversary year, but I feel that enough's enough. Oh, yes, uh, Shooter Gatwa is, uh, is the doctor, or will be the doctor. But you'd never know it from the way that the guy behaves some of the time. I'm not sure how much is, of it is coming from him, how much of it is coming from others, people who, uh, who he's listening to, who are mentoring him in one way or another. This is a star-making show. But that being said, the people who are being made stars by it have to kind of behave like stars and behave like the leads of a family adventure series. I believe that that's essential. I don't think it's a particular, particularly spicy take, but he may not take this that well. I, I don't know. So, yes, yeah, Shooter Gatwa, 30-year-old Scots actor, doctor in waiting, media darling, and, and fashion, vic fashion icon, I, sh I suppose I should say. He was cast well over a year ago now, wasn't he? Just after Easter 2020. 22. God, doesn't time fly? So yeah, he was uh, announced to the world as uh, simply the star of series 14 of Doctor Who one Sunday lunchtime. And within hours, he was escorted, was up the red carpet at the BAFTA TV Awards by returning showrunner Russell T. Davies. Big day for him. Big day for us as well in the, in the fan base, wasn't it? It was frantic. And, and shoot, he was saying a lot of the right things from the get-go, quite literally on the red carpet, you know, he said a few things on the red carpet, which I know annoyed a lot of people because it felt like, it felt like compelled speech. It felt like a prepared speech that he'd been told to give almost because it was the standard answers to standard questions. Again, in that instance, I thought to myself, well, they did ask, what was the guy supposed to say? They were boring questions boring answers and so I, again, I sort of gave him a, a bit of a pass particularly when I read this quote from Shooty I think this was on the day too so he said uh, there aren't quite the words to describe how I'm feeling a mix of deeply honored beyond excited and of course a little bit scared this role and show means so much to so many around the world including myself and each one of my incredibly talented predecessors has handled that unique responsibility and privilege with the utmost care. I will endeavor my utmost to do the same. And who, who can argue with any of that? Right, Russell? Yeah, exactly. I thought to myself, you know, this guy, how much he knows about Doctor Who is kind of by the by. You know, I've never been a gatekeeper, and I don't think people need to know this show to uh, to play the part beforehand so i was i was willing and welcome to accept this guy with his beaming smile and, and masses of enthusiasm at exactly the right time in his career so yeah he's been out on location consistently i'd say between certainly over the last six months or so so we're getting used to seeing lots of shots aren't we of him running up and down streets with various people and sometimes they tell us who they are and sometimes they don't and it's all all the fun of the fair, really. This is something that we never had during the Chris Chibnall era, and I'd, I'd sort, I'd sort of missed it all, really. And uh, but through the processes of all that, we've seen this new Doctor, haven't we, in a procession of of new new costumes, I suppose you could say, one by one by one. They've been they've been appearing there. Now, this has 
taken me by surprise. I try not to be too precious about Doctor Who, Doctor Who standards, about Doctor Who touchstones, and about that as that which has gone before. Things do need shaking up from time to time, now and again. And I think the reason why we're a little bit resistant to, to that now, at the point that we are at now, is because the, the regime, I'm going to call it that, a regime, they weren't a production team, they were a regime. When they came in in 2017, they had a list of all these things that they wanted to do. And not, I think somewhere near the bottom was make a, a watchable uh, TV show for the entire family to enjoy, whatever their, whatever their political beliefs or whatever else. It <laughs> didn't seem to be on, in, the, in, the, uh, in the offing remotely. So, yeah, they're off on location at the moment, and we've, we've seen all these various costumes turn up. But just this last week, we got a look at the, at the latest one. So this, this is it now. We've got, this is Shooty Gatwa uh, with Bonnie Langford there, the, the returning companion, Melanie Bush, played again by Bonnie Langford on the left. And there's the Shooty. So the Doctor is back. He's back in a leather jacket. You know, he has worn a leather jacket before. That's accepted. But he's never dressed like someone out of Magic Grim Mike before. <laughs> See? So for me, this is very, very uh, stark. It's stand out. And I'm not possessed of the world's greatest gaydar, but absolutely the gayest thing I think I've ever seen anybody ever wear on Doctor Who. You see, for me, each Doctor simply must have not costume, but clothes. And a wardrobe rather than a uniform, if you follow me. They must have a silhouette. There must be a, a contrast in that mix somewhere. So I'm thinking about, you know, Matt Smith was a, a mix of um, a head boy and Peter Pan, wasn't he? I, I always think of David Tennant, I think I've described David Tennant on this show before, as being a part gumshoe detective and part supply teacher. You've got Capaldi, most obviously of all. I always think of him as a cross between a magician and, and a mod father type, a Paul Weller kind of guy, or Ray Davis from the Kinks. You, know, you get the picture, that kind of thing. So there must always be some sort, of, some sort of contrast, some sort of break that makes him seem a man out of time. But this applies even more so when it comes to the silhouette, the silhouette of the character. You've got to be able to recognise this guy in the shadows. And yeah, I've noticed that Shooter Gatwa himself, he wears, he wears some pretty weird stuff. So this could have been considerably, uh, considerably worse than, than that, couldn't it? So it could have been any one of, any one of a number of things from ridiculously short shorts to man bags and, and everything else that we've seen him kitted out in, which you know, again, this is patently ridiculous. Of course it is, but I like my stars to be starry. So I didn't really think anything of that either. But I have to confess that this has worn me down across just eight or nine, nine if you count the Christmas special too. There is no look now, no silhouette, a procession of different costumes. Now, maybe this doctor, just like Shooty Gatwa, is a bit of a clothes horse. I don't know. They have to re-establish the uniqueness of him in the way they did when Chris Eccleston first swaggered onto the screen in that leather jacket unmistakable and not just because of the ears now uh, i'm wondering who exactly is is doing this who's responsible for for this drastic shift and just in the last couple of days shooter gatwa has given an interview to vogue magazine here so this is the latest issue of vogue and it's for pride month and they've got the <laughs> miriam margley she's up on the cover I think some people consider Miriam to be a bit of a national treasure, don't they? I, I certainly I think she's a fantastic actress and lots of fun. And, and this is a lovely image. It's perfect for the front of this sort of magazine. I think it sends the right, the right kind of message. And Miriam's got a fantastic story, hasn't she? I know she struggled with her own uh, sexuality all her life. Yes, it's wonderful to see her so free and, and buzzing there on this fun cover. But inside its pages is a, a generous interview with our very own Shuti Gatwa. And in it, he talks about, about costuming of the Doctor. Obviously, this man 
he likes clothes. I don't think that's that's a stretch. He's a, quite a private man, but I don't think he keeps any secret of that. So how has he arrived at all these various different different outfits, these combination of outfits? And what does this say about his doctor and his connection, his connection to the character, whether he's finding the character? Because I believe that the the clothes are part of it, particularly when, when an actor first takes the role. And I think this is why initially they don't accessorize quite so much. They don't mix it up quite so much. Now he does speak about the costume in here. He says that months after getting the role, I went to see the, uh, the producers and I got the scripts and they asked me my thoughts on the show's costumes. So generally on the show's general costumes. And uh, he, he, uh, offered to them he was thinking along the lines of uh, of ralph Lauren's collaboration with morehouse and spelman colleges i'm not going to pretend i know what that is i have to go and look it up but what he's talking about what he's talking about is this stuff which he describes as really really preppy now when i took a look at this i thought wow i completely get this this is very very stylish it's, you can imagine a man out of time wearing this and although this look is very complete, isn't it? There's, there's no contrast to speak of. You could do that with sort of modern accessories in some way. You could wear trainers with it, or you could carry one of those ridiculous bags that you like so much. I don't know. But you can see completely where Shooty was going with this. I guess I was thinking about catering to the audience that already watches Doctor Who. Just imagine that shoot. <laughs> what a ridiculous idea. <laughs> but they're like, let's push it forward. They're really keen on progress. And Vogue finishes off by adding, let's just say it, Doctor Who is getting sexy. Well, they would say that, wouldn't they? I'm not done with Vogue yet. <laughs> Don't care. Definitely, definitely not. It's easy to throw all this at shooty, isn't it? The Diet Coke break, Doctor there but in this instance it seems to be it's the culture there and he trusts them because well <laughs> progress as he's just a progress is never not good is it now so his instincts were were this and they took him there the stakes have never been higher for doctor who at the moment and i'm including in 2004 there's a strong argument to say that doctor who it's past its sell-by date. There's a lot of people out there that still believe that and believe that too much damage has been done. This character, this hero, needs to be recognisable. People need to be able to latch onto him and get what he's about and to feel the legacy again too. It's incredibly important. And I'm not saying that progress isn't, but everything in moderation. And what it reminds me of, the, the weirdness about all of this is how it's a sort of inverse of what that clown Chris Gibnell did with, with Jodie Whittaker just a few short years ago. In that instance, they asked her what she wanted and she said something completely ridiculous. She waved around this old, old photo, wasn't it, from some early 90s fashion magazine. And they just, they just went with it, no questions asked. They're hopeless, Chris Gibnell, and his dopey stuff. The crux of it was, seems they probably knew better, but couldn't say no to the pretty girly. They, they didn't respect her enough as a professional, as an adult, to tell her she was talking bollocks. But of course, it's fans like me that are told that we're sexist for knowing when they'd all got it so, so wrong. Just as Shooty knew back whenever it was, whenever they were throwing that outfit together, that they'd got it wrong too. But he's been convinced to wear this stuff and that it'll all be fine because they know better than I do, don't they? They've run the show before, haven't they? You know, why wouldn't he? I, do you... Do you blame him? It's not like this isn't a good look, a distinctive look for the next incarnation of this character. Ideally, though, if they just if they just pick one and go with that, particularly when we're, when we're just talking about eight or nine episodes. And I'm now at the point where I, th I think if we want to work out how many outfit changes Shoot is going to have per season of Doctor Who, think back to yourself. How many village people were there? Exactly. And I think the book stops, this particular book, at Russell T. Davies. Where do you think you're going, mate? I'm not done with you yet. I'm just getting warmed up. I nearly made this video just after Christmas for one very clear reason in particular. And I wouldn't say I was incensed by this, but I was bothered. So back in December 
it was when they when they announced the new costume they revealed it to the press didn't they all that plaid and that bright orange woman's sweater as we later found out in the doc martin boots that particular look we also got to see them didn't we out on location filming the first material as the new doctor the 15th doctor and his companion ruby sunday played by millie gibson very very exciting she'd only been cast a few weeks earlier well cast certainly revealed a few weeks earlier and yeah so it was very very infectious it was all very very heightened and they shared this video from the location on that day so check this check this out don't you remember this one so they were they were out there filming and they they'd done this on their smartphones and i think it was shooter that had shared this and but here they are showing off and there's the lovely millie gibson there doing all the, all the business for the camera a bit of razzle dazzle and all the rest of it but i'm not going to play the soundtrack to this because as she's doing that shooty gatwa is is swearing he's using the f word he's in costume as the doctor on a social media platform swearing and laughing and joking and swearing again there he is with that big smile he's an incredibly infectious character with loads of charisma and personally i think he looks pretty cool in that i never had a problem with this costume but should the lead in a major family drama be so active on social media any social media that's debatable in itself but should he be sharing material in costume as that character where he's effing and blinding the crux of the matter isn't should doctor who actors not swear they're only human beings they all swear of course they swear but not in costume and not on screen it was a charming video and i put this down this is the first pass that i gave i put this down to youthful exuberance and camaraderie the these two young people really young in the case of Millie Gibson it was their their first day on location in costume in the roles of their of their lifetimes I cut them some slack because I like them both and it's day one I know but then then it continued there was more so in April they were out again on location this time on the streets of Cardiff again Millie was there so was Shooty and so was Jinx Monsoon and various other 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 beasts and things like that in another new costume and we got to see loads of photographs of that didn't we they were they were papped and they were snapped and they were put under various hashtags all over Twitter there was hundreds of photographs of that day and on some of them we see Shooty Gatwa taking taking a few moments several times and what do we find him doing again in costume as the doctor in public in broad daylight here he is smoking whilst in costume again as the doctor uh, this person i was very very impressed with shooty's personal health and fitness i think it's a great message to send to young people to look after yourself everything in moderation i love that he that he spends so much time in the gym and he's so clear, so motivated and if you follow him i'm sure that you pick up on that too and it probably makes you feel inspired to do exactly the same thing so i was stunned to see this guy who put so much time into his into his appearance into his health lighting up at all let alone in costume as doctor who generations of people of families who've lost family members to cancer from smoking know the dangers again it's a lifestyle choice it's not necessarily a moral question but billy piper was a smoker during her time on doctor who and she hid it from the public so did matt smith if they can frankly shooty so can you i think you should take a leaf out of millie gibson's book and yeah think of think of the families think of the wholesomeness of a show like doctor who think of about who it appeals to the people who not just the people who already watch it the audience that will watch, watch it no matter what but think about the audience that it's trying to get back think of the parents because quite rightly so you have to get the parents on board invested to know that they're safe watching your show and you as their hero before you'll get the kids again i think that millie gibson understands that i'm hoping that the message gets through to shooty gatwa or maybe that was just another mad moment i'm not entirely sure now again 
this is a 30 year old man he's he's not a little boy addiction can affect anybody to anything maybe he's happy smoking i don't know but for me this is a pretty big one it's not the 1970s anymore as people are always telling me <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah smoking dressed as doctor who absolutely a a no-no okay a no-no oh no no we're not done yet sit yourself back down my friend yeah i said i wasn't done with vogue either didn't i so yeah under the headline Shooty Gatwa on Barbie, Doctor Who, and bearing it all in, in British Vogue that we mentioned earlier on, the new Pride issue that's just been published. Shooty Gatwa's name is there on the cover underneath the headline Pride and Joy, and inside he's there introduced as the soon-to-be-crowned new Doctor Who. But for his photo shoot with this magazine, that ties into the release of Barbie. I think the Barbie movie is out in about three or four weeks, something like that. So it is out in July. So for, for part of this, he's there in this photo shoot, but he's not wearing one of his terrible outfits from his own wardrobe or anything like that. He's actually in just his birthday suit with a bit of, with a bit of jewelry. So this is the first of the pictures we've got here. So, so this is a recreation of Yves Saint Laurent's 1971 Paul Homme ad campaign. And, and they pressed him on these pics and he boasted how it was such a doddle after years on that sex education show with Netflix. And he said how he was, his only real doubt about doing the entire thing was he was waiting on a phone call from his old girl back up in Scotland from his dear old mom. What have you been doing? <laughs> Why are you in this magazine in the all together? It goes on to Doctor Who via Barbie. Now, the Barbie movie is out. I think it's out pretty soon, sort of mid to late July sometime. Judy talks about how surprised he was to find out his co-star on that movie, Ryan Gosling. He's his big Doctor Who fan. I think we've, sort of, we've got a hint at that a couple of times, haven't we? I think he found Matt Smith for that film because of his love of Doctor Who, because he found it on Netflix or something like that. It's a really cool story. And Judy, he reads it as enthused and sweet-natured as every talks about how the, the show's reach is always surprising him so it makes for it makes for an amusing an amusing read after sex education we all became public property to an extent you have to fight for your right to privacy after that he says but you also do feel like you owe people something in setting my boundaries i knew i wanted to separate the private and the public now i'm not going to argue with any of that i think that's very very healthy absolutely right and everybody should should hold hold their own own lines shouldn't they and think about your own your own boundaries boundaries are really important we all have to have ours and and i'm sad to say shooty so does doctor who and this isn't doctor who it's not even nudity this is eroticism and whilst it's undoubtedly a striking image that's beautifully shot posed by a man probably in the prime of his life and at this crucial point in his career. And that is a powerful statement in itself. If he'd have done this two years ago, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have any problem at all. But right now, attached to a family adventure series. That's the crucial part. This is at the same time that Vogue are stating that Doctor Who's just got sexy. That's their editorial take. This is speaking to eroticism, to desire and sexual excitement. And the simple fact is, as arty as this is, that's still Doctor Who's bum cleavage right there on screen. Now, I remember back in the day, back in the 70s and the 80s, maybe a little bit into the 90s, we'd see things like that all the time, wouldn't we? <laughs> all the workmen out in the street, the builders, the plumbers, all the rest of it. They used to call it builders bum and i remember i remember one time asking one of these builders you know why do you do that don't you ever get a chill he says, oh, yeah he said but at least it's somewhere to keep my mars bar isn't it and i thought well fair enough everybody needs a snack it doesn't matter that none of the earlier doctors ever did anything like that you know this is something i i'm hearing a lot from people who feel similarly to me you would have caught, have caught patrick Troughton doing that or anybody you know, or peter davison or anybody like that that's kind of by the by because it was an it was an earlier time. I mean, I've expressed disapproval of the Vogue shoot on social media, 
and been sent all sorts of images. Like, what about this and this and even this? I mean, maybe for some that counts as eroticism. I don't know. But the truth of the matter is, that's just, I wouldn't even describe it as nudity. Somebody's shoulders is neither, neither here nor there. And when people have, even more so when people are outside of the show itself, and they've done similar either before or after, Colin, I'm thinking of you, well, that's fine too. These are shots, aren't they, for people going into entertainment. They, they, they're marketing what we now call their brand, but it's their physical being and their aura. And it was the same with some of the girls. Of, of course it was. We look back at Katie Manning when she did this famous Redford tidbit. I was sent this as well. But this is different. This was a couple of years after she left the show. And yes, there is a Dalek in that spread. So it's trading off her association with the show. But this magazine wasn't freely available. It, they could have even owned the Dalek. And Katie Manning, her, she's the captain of her own ship. She was no longer under contract in Doctor Who, the show had moved on by this point, and so had the audience. Same with Janet Fielding here. Although these shots were taken around the time that she was that she was in the show, these hardly qualify, do they? She's not really wearing anything here in these shots, again from tidbits, that it is any more or less revealing than the things that she wore on screen as the companion. And this is another thing too. The role of the companion is different to the role of the Doctor. The Doctor is the hero, the central character, the timeless icon of entertainment. Companions are people of their time, aren't they? How they dress, how they behave. Tegan, again, was, was no different. Now, these pictures, back then, in the 1980s, when these were, when these were published, they weren't freely available on every smartphone for people to share. Amongst. I didn't even see these pictures until the 90s. And let me tell you, more's the pity, because I, I really like these when I was going through that very difficult age. But context is everything and intent even more so. Vogue, they're spelling it out, aren't they? Very, very clearly and very frankly. And I believe that Shuti Gatwa, he should take a moment, consider his public persona now consider the brand of doctor who and where it could take him in the future who's watching and who do they want to watch we're still waiting on those 60th anniversary specials later this year but there's that full new doctor who series starring shooty gatoire and millie gibson that's coming up to debut in 2024 let me know what you think of all of this, of shooty and these choices, this conduct, this pattern of behaviour, and how he seems to view the character. Do you think any of this is okay? I'm no prude by any stretch of the imagination, but this character is special. Doctor Who has its boundaries. And if Vogue want to sex up the show, well, who are Vogue to decide that? It's Russell T Davies, Bad Wolf, Disney+, Plus and BBC Studios. And Shuti Gatwa, he shouldn't just be a passenger in this. If he has better ideas about what the character should be wearing and doing, he should listen to his own instincts. I believe this guy, I think his heart's in the right place. I think he could be great for Doctor Who, and great for the viewers, but not making calls like this. Shuti Gatwa and Millie Gibson have inherited the classic Doctor Who logo for Series 14. That's coming next year. Are they worthy of it, though? What are you thinking so far? Have I got it all wrong? Am I being a bit of an old fuddy-duddy? <laughs> Do people even still say fuddy-duddy anymore? I don't know. Please let me know what you think of it all in the comment section of, of Shooty's smoking whilst dressed as the doctor of his swearing in costume too. What do you think about the brand new costume that we've just seen? The jeans, the leather jacket, the very tight t-shirt and the cowboy boots? I don't know. We're one step away from the fireman, aren't we? I think we're getting there. Let me know in the comment section down below what you make of all of that. I listened to my gut instinct on these things. I was right in 2017. And believe me, there was nobody who was wishing myself to be wrong more than me. It was a spectacular failure. I feel there's masses of potential here in Shuti Gatwa as he slinks his way back off into the TARDIS there. I would hate to see it all go terribly wrong please like this video subscribe to the channel hit the cloister bell to get all the notifications about what we're doing next whether it's a podcast a live stream another extra 
that's it for this time. But it's not all bad news, is it, Shooty? At least now you've got somewhere to put your Mars bar, haven't you? <laughs>